Okay, before the episode starts, this is what I think is going to happen in the episode. So on this episode of Gundam The Witch from Mercury, Gaul, Turk, and Soleta Mercury have their second rematch. And it goes exactly like the first match. Soleta just once again shreds Gaul, Turk's Delanza into a billion pieces. And then Mio's father is like, That thing is definitely a Gundam. It must be destroyed. Soleta must be killed. So then, just when they're about to kill Saletta, Lady Prospera shows up in the red mobile suit and, like, busts her out of the colony. And then she's like, Oh, Lady Prospera! And she's like, Oh, Saletta, let's go together. And then Saletta and Mia reads in the condom, too, just for the hell of it. They're like, Where are we going? And Lady Prospera's like, We're going to the Neo Ayug. And so they get on, like, the Argama. And then they're like, This is our new leader, Bernie Sanders. And Bernie Sanders is like, this world is ruled by like the top 1% of billionaires. And now we have to bring the fight to them. So we're going to take the fight to Earth. Get in your Gundam, Saleta. Here are the three enemies we must fight. First, there is Elon Musk, who is a sexy anime boy in this universe. Then there is the common writer Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Then finally, most dangerous of all, the robot man. Zakaida. Hello, Sulet. Join the Metaverse, Sulet. You can be our 40th user. We have legs now, better than your original legs. You won't be needing those anymore, ha ha ha. Alright, I'm done screwing around, but that would be awesome. Seriously, I don't think that'll actually happen, but I just had to riff for a second. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Yumbo Green, and I just need 50 more subscribers to get monetized. Come on, 50 subscribers. That is like two groups of 25 people, which is like the average population of two rooms in the world. Listen everyone, go into those two rooms and ask everyone in those two rooms to subscribe to this channel right now. If we do that, surely there must be 50 people in those two rooms, and then I'll get monetized like today. Anyway, Gundam the Witch from Mercury. So we start off three seconds after the end of episode two with Sue and Mio in their super cool Gundam hallway with like escalators on the walls. Mio lays down the stakes that both of their lives will be ruined if Saleta doesn't fight. And so Saleta decides not to fight. What? Okay, so she wants to be a normal girl with a typical anime protagonist life. And Mirene's just starts abusing Saleta and calls her sex craze. And Saleta is conflicted because she doesn't want to marry Mirene. But if she's forced to marry her, she also doesn't want to have to cheat on her to date the people she wants to date. Mirene tells her that she doesn't intend to marry her at all, and she's also a year away from actually being of the age of being married, which gives them exactly one year to figure out a way to cancel the marriage if they can set up the marriage in the first place. And I'm just very, very much looking forward to that second season time skip where they will probably get married. Well... Anyway, at that time, then Mirene then asks Saleta to make her a promise. And if I had to take a guess, I'm guessing they promise not to marry each other. Then we get the Daryl Blade. So the Daryl Blade is Gold Turk's new OP mobile suit. It's apparently not Lady Prosper's mobile suit. I guess it makes sense since apparently the Jaturk family specializes in mono eye style suits, although they have visors, not the eye. Maybe the eyes underneath the visor. Who knows? Yosobi's The Blessing Plays, and would you look at how fat the pilot suits are in this series? And speaking of fat pilot suits, holy shit, after the Ope, Saleta is seen in a sick-ass plug suit like Eva. I guess that's what she has on underneath her uniform? Wow, okay. Anyway, so she's on the phone with her mom, and okay, thank god, I can finally reveal the secret I've been hiding that Saleta's mom is actually Lady Prospera, did you know? I didn't know how long I could keep that a secret, but... Was it obvious from the fact she had a prosthetic arm? In the prologue, they revealed her mother had the same prosthetic arm. Also, if you didn't see the prologue in the last episode, right after she appeared, they immediately cut to Saleta, like, calling for her mom. So that was also a hint. Also, she apparently does have eyeballs. A lot of people were worried she didn't have eyeballs, but there they are. She has them. And lastly, Lady Prospero drops that she considers the aerial gun to her daughter, too. And this is foreshadowing and clarifies something I was super wondering about. Anyway, this begins episode 3, Gull's Pride. 
So Letta finally goes back to school where she's extremely popular, and anyway, Nika shows up and tries to get information about how the Arrow Gundam is made. So Letta really doesn't know what the Gundam is made from and can't tell her anything good. She gives her a random description of, like, geometry, and that somehow really excites Nia. Then Gold Turk shows up, and he challenges her to a duel again. Now, Soleta is horrified by the confrontation itself, but otherwise relieved that it's a confrontation with him, and he's an easy fight because she beat him once already. He calls her a bumpkin, and she jogs out of the room. <laughs> Look at this jogging, what? <laughs> she, like, literally jogs out of the room. <laughs> Soletta, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> okay, so Prospera, I guess, gives Turk some blackmail. That, uh, ooh, okay, this is behind-the-scenes intrigue. Okay, apparently in episode two, when Prospera showed up at Turk's office in the last episode, she already knew that he had failed this assassination attempt, and so she blackmailed him with that to get him on her side in Soletta's trial in episode two. And now the whole thing's, like, played out, and she's, like, paying him off. Now, meanwhile, the blonde guy is Googling Lady Prospera, trying to figure out who she is, and basically just trying to catch up on current events in this universe. Now, hilariously back at the Tomato House, Soleta tries to hang out with her best friend, Mirin, and Mirin is just like, fuck you, we will die. <laughs> and then Elon shows up again, and he's just like, I'm Elon Musk, buy a Tesla. No, actually, he's apparently a member of the dueling committee, and he asks her for her phone number, and, you know, they exchange those over, like, Nintendo DS local Wi-Fi. And then, like, Mirin makes fun of Soleta for, like, wanting friends and dates, and, like, Elon wishes her the best with that. So, anyway, then she goes to the dueling lounge, which is apparently, like, a hot spot where a bunch of people hang out in school. She meets Shadik, he's the blonde guy, and, unfortunately, then she notices that Ghoul likes hanging out there, because I guess it's got a view. Now, at this point, they finally show off the logo of the Estesia School of Technology on a big screen. And it occurs to me that this is literally almost the same logo as the Titans from Zeta Gundam, which is weird. What is up with the weird influence of Zeta Gundam on this series? It's amazing and it's amusing. Anyway, so then Elon acts as the rep for the duel, which is really funny because he has no emotion whatsoever. And then they reveal that before competing in the duel, everyone has to declare their full stakes for the duel. So Ghoul goes with the same as before, which I guess was his marriage. And Saleta also asks for Ghoul to apologize to Miri. Now, after that, some fly honey girl named Cecilia with some tall, thick socks starts giving Ghoul a lot of shit for getting to do a do-over because his dad is so rich. And Ghoul tells her to piss off, and then it seems like he's about to, like, punch her in the face or do something else unethical. But then Saleta, who has zero tolerance for anyone bullying anyone, actually defends him, which is a very interesting twist. So they end up having an awkward elevator ride where Saleta tries to explain her awkward life point system, where if you run away you get one point and fighting is super bad because you could lose everything, but moving forward gets you two points because moving forward isn't the same thing as running, because if you run away, your problems are still there, and if you move forward, then you're ahead of your problems. Now, Ghoul is actually super impressed by this because Soleta's obviously got her shit together. She's got good parents. He does not have good parents. And it's very cool that Soleta runs her life with philosophical concept, which is a very Gundam thing to do. It almost seems like they're starting to get along, so of course he leaves. Now, back in the hangar, he goes to all his people, and they all cheer him on. And apparently his brother shows up who reminds him that he wants to become the pilot for the Dominicus, which is another mobile suit somewhere else you've never seen. All right, here's the halfway point. So anyway, Solita launches into the Gundam. Mirin calls her out because she stole her phone contact info. And then Turk's father and brother, who were all doing those assassinations before, reveal that they fucked with this battle and they've left some kind of mysterious trap somewhere on the battlefield. But... The brother is like, that's kind of like insulting and, and thinks Ghoul can win without it. Mysterious Afro girl Choo Choo shows up once again as a couch potato and does nothing. And then Elon destroys them. This universe, the Gundam fight, which has pseudo G Gundam rules. It's almost literally the same as G Gundam, except in G Gundam you had to destroy the Gundam's head. Body, body. Hey. And in this universe you actually only have to destroy its V fin, which is like kind of a step further in difficulty. Although I guess you could still destroy the whole head and win, 
Like, Shining Finger would, like, totally have, like, an easy time winning under these rules. Anyway, they say their local Pledge of Allegiance, which points out that winning a mobile suit fight requires both a good pilot and a good suit, and then they start the fight. So this is our second real mobile suit battle of the show, and if you haven't caught on yet, a major theme of the series seems to be that everything has drone-style remote control weapons. Besides funnels, it just seems like everything can be droned and moved around. So... This episode gets us our first major universe difference from the main UC timeline. Up until this point, there was a snowball's chance in hell this could still be somehow on the UC timeline, or at the very least, use UC-style rules like Gundam X did, but apparently in this universe, beam weapons are weak as fuck against water, and apparently they don't work properly in the rain, so they probably won't work at all underwater, I mean, based on this. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is uh, Goal has been cheating by turning on the sprinklers and making it rain on the battlefield. Now, I guess his dad set this up because he thinks the uh, Daryl Blade can win using melee weapons in this situation since long distance weapons will be disabled by the water. Mia Reen flips out over the cheating and decides she's going to do her own cheating to like level the playing field. So at this point she steals this like construction spider car thing. Saleta psychs herself up in the meantime, dodges Ghoul's rocket punches, and Mirin finds some people pumping the sprinklers, so she scares them off using the spider car. Then Saleta starts to get the edge in the battle, some racist kids cheer her on, and Ghoul's mobile suit just gets completely wrecked. His dad curses him off for being a loser, and this honestly like ruins the duel for him because it destroys his mental composure. And so Ghoul ends up punching out his system computer, which further messes up his machine. He and Saleta have a typical saber clash, where he goes full rage and pushes her into a wall. Then we get a classic Gundam bad guy move, where he kicks her. And as he kicks her, he almost knocks her into a wall. But she actually bounces off the wall and cuts off the horn on his mobile suit's head, giving her the win. And then her phone like lights up like crazy because everyone texted her all at once. So Mio Mio commended that she's safe and Saleta won't be expelled. And Ghoul crawls out of the wreckage with his mobile suit and Saleta goes to see that he's okay. Then they have this gorgeous super animated moment where she says he was a strong opponent. And so he marries her. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck is this series? What the fuck is it turning into after that dark as fuck prologue episode? Like, this is now officially a hilarious nerd girl harem anime. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a female-driven harem anime. But, I mean, good for Celeste. She's got the first one. And now she's got, like, two wives. Wow, thank you, internet fan art. The ending song is totally shipping Sue and Mio hard, though. And look at this cool fan art at the end. Wow, I, I can't with the show. It's just too freaking wonderful. Wow. <laughs> Saleta Mercury is just so fucking entertaining to watch. She's like a completely different type of Gundam pilot. Like she has this like typical Gundam pilot core philosophy. It's a little weird. It's like points, but hey, it, it works for her. This episode kind of explained it all. It's cool, but oh my God, Saleta is so fucking hilarious that I can barely concentrate. Um, Yeah, so there was a lot here. There was a lot behind the scenes like now that I know how the episode ended, like, I can kind of tell, like, retroactively that all throughout the episode, Golja Turk was, like, kind of, like, begrudgingly going along with, like, Oh, you have good parents? Well, mine suck. Oh, everyone's nice to you? Oh, everyone hates me. Kind of like that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Saleta is fucking hilarious. I think the fact she was barely in episode two was actually good for the story, but bad for the show. So let us just too, too watchable. Meanwhile, Mirin is kind of starting to wear out her welcome in this episode. Saleta was so, Saleta was trying so hard just to be her friend and she was just shutting her down every time. At this point, I might as well release one more of the facts I got out of the Cradle Star novel because it really, really strongly influences this episode. Apparently, Saleta grew up on Mercury with like no friends and she never went to school there. And all her expectations of what school and friends are like are completely derived from like some kind of retro kids anime. I don't know which one. I'd have to guess it was like Haruhi Suzumiya or like that one where all the kids have dinosaur robots. 
As a result, this episode really lays out her plans to have a TV sitcom style normal life. And Mio is just constantly there destroying that with her angry soonery lesbian relationship. And wow, man, the show is fucking great. Okay, so far so good. But I have a feeling in the next couple episodes, this might eventually finally turn into a traditional Gundam series. We're going to have to wait and see. I think things are really going to stagnate until eventually they get out of school. But maybe they'll stay there for a few more episodes and have like some retro G Gundam Gundam fights. Uh, now I kind of want to see Soleta fight Domon. That would be like a really good like trainer for her. Anyway, this show keeps getting really twisty and I'm like all here for it. I just hope it doesn't eventually fall into like weird girl protagonist Tenchi Muyo nonsense where like Soleta has like nine boyfriends and girlfriends and nothing fucking like matters anymore. All right. Anyway, I was Mio Buster Green and I fucking love this show. Please subscribe, guys. Um, I'll keep making crazy content like this episode. Thanks. Later.